So Firefox is going to end the support of TLS 1.0 and TLS 1.1. I have a few points here that I'd like to discuss. Let's get into it. So starting from March 2020, Firefox will disable access to web servers that serve Handshake, TLS Handshake of version 1.0, 1.1, and obviously anything before that. And this is fantastic news. And why is that? Let's go ahead and discuss these few points that I have here. And I'm going to go ahead through certain, certain things and why this is a good change. So first of all, as you might know, TLS is a protocol that negotiates encryption so they can so the two parties can communicate to each other and they exchange keys and after they exchange keys they start encrypting messages between them okay and there are a lot of algorithms that are used to actually encrypt these messages and prior to TLS 1.2 there were an abundance of algorithms encryption algorithms unfortunately most of these encryption algorithms are bad and weak and have proven that people can actually hack them. And there is attacks going on like Poodle and other kind of attacks where an attacker can actually negotiate with the server to actually downgrade the communication between a client and a server to use a weaker encryption algorithm so that they can actually crack it and... Uh, essentially sniff your communication. So this is the case with TS 1.0 and TS 1.1. Again, if you want to learn more, watch my video on TLS. The negotiation, the ability to have abundant options is the weakness here, okay? With TS 1.2 and 1.3, this has been improved. Well, definitely 1.3 has been improved to the maximum. Okay, so that's, that's why it is a good choice that Firefox has made that. Obviously, People are not happy. <laughs> web server masters who host websites and have these uh, encryption or TLS uh, versions, the older version of websites, they have to go and upgrade their version. That's why Firefox actually, this is not the first time Firefox or Mozilla announces this news. They announced this since October 2018, so two years ago. Is it two years ago? Yeah, one year and a half. It's enough time. And it's incredibly easy, as I've shown in my HA proxy video and Nginx video, to upgrade. It's literally just one configuration to that you put in your config file, and voila, it will just my upgrade to the latest. It will start using the TL, the newer TLS version. Because so it's not hard to do, especially. Well, I I say that because I use modern proxies, but if you have like an old web server and well, your web server is your TLS termination. Uh, proxy in this case uh, and your web server is like doesn't support TS 1.3 or 1.2 you're kind of SOL right so that's people are a little bit worried about this that's why Firefox actually added a fallback so when you started from March whatever Firefox releases that I'm not sure let me actually check the release version of Firefox yeah so starting Firefox 73, when you connect from the browser to a web server that only supports TLS 1.0 or 1.1, you will get a nice warning, and I'm going to put it on the screen right now. And uh, so that warning tells you the following. Secure connection fail. An error occurred during a connection to this website, right? Peer using unsupported version of security protocol. So the error code actually is SSL error unsupported version. So that's the version you're going to get. Okay. So you're going to give some options. This website might not support TLS 1.2, right? So that's the negotiation that we, we talked about in previous videos, right? Because Firefox will try to say, hey, I only support 1.2 as a minimum. And if the server actually responds, oh, no, actually, I support only 1.1, one, one, you'll get this notification. So what will you will get an option here with a button that says enable TLS 1.0 and 
PL TLS 1.1. And be careful when you click that button. First of all, I really encourage you not to access a website that uses an old version of TLS. That's the, that's the first point. The second thing, if you do absolutely have to and you click that button, this option is a global option over your Firefox browser. The moment you enable that, any website that uses 1.0 or 1.1 TLS will be accessible. This is not a per site configuration, so be aware of that, okay? And then finally, I'm gonna talk about a little bit why the minimum version that Firefox picked, TLS 1.2 is the minimum. And I have problems with that, but I understand absolutely why it is the minimum version, okay? Because TLS 1.2 has some limitation and has its own problems, okay? So Firefox now sets the minimum TLS version as 1.2, but the current version, the most current version of TLS is 1.3, and we have discussed the advantages of this version. So the problem with, if you're communicating with TLS 1.2, the web server that supports TLS 1.2, just be careful on, on one thing. First of all, the performance won't be as great as TLS 1.3. So that's, that's kind of something you can, you can ignore if you want, but you're doing two round trips instead of one because TLS 1.2 actually negotiates not only the actual symmetric key, but it also negotiate the key exchange algorithm. And that, is that additional hop is costly if you're doing it a lot, okay? So that's the first problem, performance. And uh, the second problem is the negotiation part, which is the first, this kind of same problem, which is the first round trip to negotiate the key exchange. So, okay, should we use RSA? Should we use Diffie-Hellman or what other key exchange algorithm? In that negotiation, you could pick the weaker version, which is RSA. And I'm not saying weaker in a case that RSA can be broken. It's not can be it doesn't can it, it cannot be broken as easily. The problem with RSA as a key exchange algorithm is it's not perfectly forward. And I've described in a video what, what perfect forward secrecy is, and I'm gonna reference it here. But in a nutshell is it uses the private public key paradigm, which is a very simple, elegant solution of encrypting thing. So in a nutshell, the priv the public key, the, the, the server will send the public key to the client and that very similarly, the client will generate the symmetric key, which will be used to encrypt, encrypt it with the public key and send it across the wire. Encrypted, right? And only the server have the matching private key unlock that and, and finds the symmetric key so it can use to actually encrypt their communication. The problem with that is you are using the same private key for every single communication, every single client, for every single one of them. The problem with that is if someone, God forbid, God recorded all your entire conversations, encrypted obviously they cannot read it but they managed to record it, and that's not that have been proven to be possible you can record these stuff obviously you cannot see anything and, and make sense of any of them because it's they are encrypted but if there is a bug in the server and since the private key is very commonly used on the server because it's hot and it's always in the memory because it's frequently used, so it will be in the CPU cache, it will be in the memory, it will be hot everywhere in the memory. So if there is something, if only there is something that actually leaks something from the memory, wink, wink, heart bleed, open SSL, already happened, <laughs> an attacker can actually get the private key. And if you get the private key of the server, it is incredibly bad, okay? And that's the problem with TLS 1.2. Now, that being said, if you're using TLS 1.2 with, because remember, it's still negotiable, or right? negotiable, right? If you're using TLS 1.2 with Diffie-Hellman as the key exchange, mind you, ephemeral Diffie-Hellman, DH, then, 
there's no problem because these keys are ephemeral. Essentially, well, they will be thrown the moment they are used. So they will not be in the memory. And if the attacker got lucky and got it, which is very unlikely, they will only be able to decrypt a single communication session, which is, eh, who cares, right? So that's that's the news I want to talk about, essentially. The Firefox announced this in 2018, October, and the cut is March 10. I'm not sure about Chrome. I'm going to add in the description if Chrome is following that. I'm pretty sure they will. This is the future, right? And it's it's always a good idea to upgrade if you're, if you're hosting a web server. Always separate your web server from your uh, TLS termination uh software i like to separate concerns and everything right i if there is a web server make sure it's a web server if it's a proxy make sure it's just a proxy so this way you can maintain this thing and comes back to my point where it's always this might have we've gone away with it 20 years ago where everything is lumped into one thing the web server is also the tls termination is also the reverse proxy also a caching that doesn't work anymore in 2020, guys, in my opinion. This is my humble opinion, right? Because the proxies now are used in service meshes and, 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 and as, as, a, as a caching layer and, and, uh, and as a language agnostic uh, proxy. So it's, it's, it's being used more and more in a specific application. So if you get a dedicated proxy, a reverse proxy that actually terminate TLS, you guarantee that this guy or whoever maintained this proxy actually put their effort into in including the latest encryption algorithm, the latest TLS versions and everything. But if you're a web server, you focus on serving uh, content, having all the necessary MIME types, uh, make sure Michael Jackson, uh, extension is supported mjs right get it no oh, that was bad i know <laughs> yeah and all other stuff right so web server be a web server please if you're a proxy please just be a proxy again my opinion leave your comments below what do you think of this news is it good or you think this is just uh this is a little bit too much and we uh, you and uh, people need more time to upgrade their tls all right guys i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome